What's up everybody? You got barbecue and bottles here. A while back we posted a video on how to sear a steak in cast iron and we got a ton of comments on it. And we love reading your comments but what we saw were a lot of people saying oh you should be doing X and other people saying you should be doing Y and these comments were conflicting against each other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you down a journey on how to sear the perfect steak in cast iron. So we're gonna be taking topics that where there was some confusion around so you know how frequently should you flip your steak when should you put the butter into the pan what oil should you be using and we're going to be testing those out in videos and we're going to release those videos once a week over the next few months here so if you want to join us on this journey to searing the perfect steak in cast iron make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that button below so for today's video we're going to be testing how frequently you should be flipping your steak to get that perfect sear. So one of these steaks, we're going to be flipping it every minute. The other, we're going to drop it in the pan and just let only flip it once. So we're going to let the first side sear and get the, the caramelized Maillard effect that we're looking for. Then we're going to flip it and let it finish. And we'll see which one ends up having the better crust and ends up having a more even doneness throughout the whole steak. So stick around. So the first thing we're going to do is just pat these steaks down dry with paper towel. We'll be testing to see whether this is necessary in another video, but the common consensus is that it's an important step just to make sure you eliminate all the moisture so that when your steak hears, hits the pan, all the energy from the pan actually goes straight into the steak as opposed to evaporating water. Now that we've got these steaks patted dry, we're gonna season them up with a little bit of salt and pepper. Now we're just gonna let these sit for 40 minutes before we put them into the pan. So we've been heating up the pan. Now let's just check the temperature. What we're gonna be doing here is with one of these infrared thermometers, just putting the laser right on the pan surface. And we want the surface of the pan to be at least 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've got that pretty much everywhere over the pan. Now it's time to add the oil. All right, now we're gonna put our oil in the pan. We're using avocado oil because it's got a high smoking point. So we're just gonna put in a good drizzle of that and then spread it around. Okay, with that in the pan, we're now gonna add in the steak. All right, so our first minute's up. So we're gonna flip this one. And again, we're gonna let the other one just sit there for probably four or five minutes before we give it its first flip, just for the comparison. All right, we've hit a minute again. We're gonna flip this. Another minute, so we're gonna flip again. minute again, flip it over. Now we're coming up on four minutes for this steak here. So I think at the five minute mark, we're gonna flip both and we'll see how they're turning it. All right, five minutes. Let's see how this one's doing. Look at that crust. All right, we're another minute in. We're gonna keep flipping this one. And now it's time for us to add our butter. So put a generous amount of butter in. You wanna make sure that butteriness gets underneath the steak. Now we're gonna throw in some garlic. Now we've just taken these whole cloves, just smush them with our palms, and then added it to the pan. You don't need to worry about peeling them or anything. Now we'll put some garlic in.
You can really start to smell the aromatics now. Another minute in here, flip this steak. Add a little bit more butter. Flip this one more time. Now we're going to start basting. So just tip your pan to one side. Take all that melted buttery goodness, some of the garlic, dump that up onto the top of the steaks. You can really start to see the caramelizing going on here, the mallard effect working out perfectly. So let's take both of these steaks off. Now while these are resting, we're just going to tint them in foil, make sure they don't cool down. All right, we've had these steaks off and they've been resting tented for about 10 minutes. So this side, we've got the steak that we just let sit for five minutes before flipping it. And this one, we've had the, the steak where we've been flipping it every 60 seconds. So first, let's look at the crust that they got. The one where we let it sit for about five minutes, it definitely has a more even crust all the way through but there's certainly some parts around the edges that may be a little bit burnt. The one where we were flipping every 60 seconds, I think we definitely got a crust around the outside, but there certainly seems to be a large pocket in the middle where the mallard effect didn't really take off. And for the mallard effect, that, that's really where the amino acids and the sugars in the steak come together under high heat to form the crust, as well as you know the flavors of cooked steak or seared steak that we all know and love. So now let's cut into this and we'll see how evenly both of them cooked. All right, so let's take a few slices out of the middle here, just so that we can see the level of doneness on each of these steaks. So overall I'd say relatively similar doneness. We did these to about 130 degrees, a little more than 130 degrees. And I think the one key difference, if you look at the steak where we left it for five minutes on each side, as you look around the edges, there's far more brown. It's not an even blending from brown through to medium rare, the pink in the middle, versus the steak where we flipped it every 15 seconds. I think it did a better job of cooking all the way through. So now, the last test is the taste test. You get the crunch of the crust, nice and tender, good medium rare there. So now let's try this one. Mm. You know what? I'm gonna give the taste test to steak A here, the one where we actually let it sit for five minutes as opposed to flipping it every every 60 seconds. I think this one developed uh, certainly a crust that made it a little bit crunchier. The taste, that really, you know, that extra crunch really flows through in terms of the caramelization of the steak itself. So my goal here was to find a winner between these two. And I think on appearance, this one had a better crust. In terms of the doneness, I would probably have to rank doneness over on the flipping every 15, every 60 seconds steak side of things. And then on the taste, hands down, I'm going to give it to the steak where we let it sit for five minutes before flipping. So there you have it, folks. It looks like 
if you gotta flip it every 60 seconds or whether you're better to leave it for five minutes before flipping. The answer, you've got it here, is leave it for five minutes. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe below. As I said, we're gonna be going down a journey here, exploring a bunch of different elements within searing a steak to figure out how, what method is the perfect method for searing steaks. Thanks for tuning in.